Hello? The Aztecs are getting settled here at the dais. Check your phones, please put them on silent. We'll let them get settled and then uh, would like coach to start us off with some open, opening remarks uh, here from the South Region champions. Coach. First of all, congratulations to Coach McDermott and Creighton. They got a really good team and we were separated by one point tonight. And if there was time on the clock, who knows what could have happened. But we're grateful to be advancing. Uh, I told the team in the locker room, they had the music going. I walked in and I told them, turn it down. I said, either sing, dance, or get out of the way. The Aztecs are going to the Final Four. So here we are. We're making the next step. And it's something we've always talked about. And I'm sure there were people who doubted we could do it. But we never doubted for a minute. And not to say it's easy to get there or that we would ever get there. But we're there now. And we're going to go and try to win the thing. Okay, questions here in the interview room? We'll start on the left side aisle. Uh, Darian, when you're standing at the free throw line, kind of knowing what's, what's at stake, can you just sort of walk us through what, what you're thinking when you get there and then after, after the first one missed? Um, just having the utmost confidence in myself. <clears throat> uh, I feel like I've, I've shot probably a thousand free throws in the last week. Um, so at the end of the day, I feel like I put in the work to be able to step up and have the confidence that I was going to make them. Okay, right side here, uh, second row. Coach, before the game, we saw you talking to Coach McDermott and, you know, embracing before the game started. So, you know, talk to us about what it's like to coach against, you know, a friend like that. It's always hard when you go against a friend because, uh, as much as I celebrate winning, if you don't feel apathy for a friend, you're not a true friend. And so I'm grateful to win, but I felt bad for Greg and his team because they're a Final Four team also. But uh, with a one and done situation, the volatility of this tournament, we were fortunate enough to go, and I feel bad for a really good Creighton team. Uh, back row on the aisle on the left. Darian, I wonder how much pressure you felt uh, on the foul, whether you expected it to be called and whether it had any impact in your shot? Um, I wouldn't say so. I feel like I still had a good look. Uh, the refs made their call. Um, but I mean, they called it, and I got an opportunity to knock down free throws to win the, team, or win the game for my team. Left side, third row. Union Tribune for Darion. Two questions. Um, number one, um, did, were you surprised that they called that foul in that part, part of the game? I mean, you've been in a lot of close games this year, and they've swallowed their whistles in a lot of games, officials seem to be. Uh, I wouldn't say I was surprised. Uh, I think I got fouled, but, I mean, it was up for the refs to decide. Uh, even if they didn't call it, we were going to lace them up and get ready for an overtime. And as you, after you missed the first one and you're getting ready to shoot the second one, you took a deep breath and exhale, which you normally, I don't think, do. What, what's... What were you thinking at that point? Um, that the moment wasn't too big for me. Uh, to do everything I've been through, uh, I feel like the opportunity was just set there for me. Uh, it was God's timing, and I just had to believe in that and just having that confidence that, yeah, I missed the first one, but I definitely wasn't going to miss the second one. Okay, right side, third row. Players, um, each of your players that came in, um, they – you know they were in for more than 10 minutes you know um just how much just how much a confidence does that give you you know um you know at this stage of the season that you're able to have those guys come in and you know you can turn to just about you know just about anybody on your bench um as you're heading into the final four yeah this is truly riding the guys that are playing the best you know so it's the end of the game guys that have played the best for the majority of those 40 minutes are in at the end and that's what we had and then obviously we have offensive defensive substitutions at time but uh I've talked about the depth being our greatest strength, and, and depth isn't a uh, strength unless they embrace it, and this team embraces it. Left side on the aisle. Gary Graves from the AP uh, for Arup and for Coach Dutcher. I guess the, the two baskets that you made late to you know, put your team ahead, uh, what, what was behind that? I mean, just were you just feeling like if you had the, the ball, if, 
and had the chance that you were going to take it, or was it called, or what? And and for coach, you know, just how your thinking went into that sequence. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> that's where we had the advantage today. It was at the four sports four spot uh, ducking in with um, Darren or Lamont coming off ball screens, and so when I got in, I just, I mean, we I've done it a thousand times throughout the season, and so it was just. It's another, it's just another shot. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more weight to it, but I wasn't thinking like that. I was just thinking, staying in rhythm and getting that shot up and, yeah, just putting my team up front. This is from a young guy that wasn't going to play basketball two years ago, was going to give it up because of injuries, to come back and play on this stage and make the baskets to send us to a Final Four is a great story. You know, the right side here on the aisle and then two more from there. Isaac Bourne, Mid-Major Madness. Coach? So uh, in the first half, Nathan Mensa was kind of uh, having a little trouble guarding Cockbrenner, but then in the second half, he came out and had one of the best defensive halves that he's had in this tournament. So what do you have to say to his defense against one of the better centers in this tournament right now? I mean, when you're playing a really good center like Cockbrenner, he's going to score some baskets, and you just try to make it hard as you can on him. And so I thought Nate, as a two-time defensive player of the year, made it hard. And those shots could have easily gone in. They didn't. And that's the difference between advancing and not advancing. OK, right side, third row, and then second row. Briefly building off that for coach or a rope, uh, any adjustments specifically to account for Cockbrenner in the second half? We just didn't want to show him angles. We played behind him a lot. Because he's so big, if you show him an angle, he drop steps. So I felt at least he had a score over a body. You know, We didn't give him the angles to throw over the top or drop step. You know, we stayed behind him with an arm up and just tried to make him score over the top of us. And he's capable of doing that, but he, uh, we were fortunate that he missed a few. And then for Lamont, you guys shoot 38% from the field. You're 8 for 11. What was working for you? Um, I was getting to the, just getting to my spots uh, in the mid-range. I was uh, knocking those down, shots I hit um, all year, shots I worked on. And um, I had some open looks from three that I took, and then I was fortunate to make it. I'm just glad uh, they went in. OK, we're going to go second row on the right, and then the back, and then up front. Joe Nugent, NBC Omaha, a question for Dutch. Uh, Creighton scored a season-low 23 points in that second half. Where did that 20 minutes rank for you guys this season in terms of uh, performance on the defensive side? Obviously, with what was at stake, it was incredible. And just Darion Lamont, the constant ball pressure they put on, that even a ball screen that usually leads to baskets, everything had to be earned tonight. And they made some important plays. But there was nothing for free tonight. Everything was hard to get for both teams. It was hard for us to score, but you know, it was just a war of attrition, and we came out on top. Back row, right side. Adam Kruger, CBS Omaha. Gwok, what does it mean to get this regional title against your hometown team? I mean, it's, it's special. You know, I mean, I watched up. I mean, I grew up watching. Uh, and Creighton uh, go to tournament and play, and just being a fan of Creighton, and he obviously they're, they're a really good team, and so being able to at least my, my final year after losing last year and being able to come back this year and play against them, the Elite Eight and beat them, it's it's uh, especially you know um, I don't I'm from Omaha, but I don't <laughs> I don't I don't feel that bad from Omaha, you know this this is for San Diego, and so uh, the people that are with me, uh, all the people from South Omaha, all my family, all my friends, all my close people. Um, they were supporting me. They were behind me. And so that's uh, all that mattered. Front row, right side. Uh, Brian, on the replay, when the game actually ended, it looked like you had a pen in your hand, like drawing up a play. I'm just wondering, like, the guys celebrate. You have to pull them back. And then there's about a two-minute delay. You don't know who, whose ball it's going to be. I'm just wondering if you can walk through that whole end sequence. It was a little bit bizarre. I think I talked for 10 minutes. I don't know if anybody heard 30 seconds. <laughs> so it was, well, if it's their ball and it's uh, more than 0.4, then we have to play straight. And if it's point three, we're going to surround the rim and not let them lob. If it's our ball, we're going to throw deep where we can just get it in and touch it. And, and hold on, hold on, who's in the game? So, you know, it was controlled madness. So, I, you know, I'm glad there was no time left because Creighton, last team to have the ball, would have had a chance to win. Let's take a Zoom question, then we'll come back to yours here. Dan? Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com for coach as well as the student athletes. This is the first time that San Diego State has ever made it to the Final Four, and, and it's the first time that the Mountain West has ever been represented. Just what it means to be sitting in history right now. Well, it's a vision Coach Fisher had all those years ago when he came to the Mesa, and 
we recruited and told people this is what we were going to do and you know they all thought it was just recruiting talk but here we sit and so thank you for coach fisher for building a great foundation for our university for supporting us and for these young guys for believing in that vision and making it come true yeah, just add on that i think we just picked up where all the, the guys that came before us left off you know going back to brandon heat malcolm thomas billy white even recently um Jordan Shackle, Matt Mitchell, KJ Fagan, all those guys. And so we're, we're just blessed to be able to pick up where they left off and uh, just to really represent them in the, the city of San Diego. Back in the room here on left side. Uh, Dutch, uh, they were, I think, 2 of 17 on threes. This is the, the fourth straight game in this tournament where teams have not even come close to their season averages. How much of that is scheme and closeouts and high hands, and how much of it is just your physicality and just sapping the legs out of them and, and you know, shooting to so much legs that they don't, even when they get an open look, they don't have the legs? Like I said, it was, it was tough to score today. I mean, both teams were tired. It's been a lot of basketball been played, and, and just we ended up winning the game on the inside, throwing it down low and trying to get toward the basket, and they tried to do the same thing. You know, Kalkbrenner obviously had a couple looks, and they tried to get downhill too, and so it's a... It, this late in the season on tired legs, neither team shot the ball particularly well. But we made enough plays and, and we're tough-minded. Uh, you know we were a defensive first team. Everybody knows that about us and our defense carries us. Okay, far left. This is uh, Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. Uh, if I could ask um, the players, not Darian, ab about what Darian means to this team. This is two games in a row in the last two, game, two days that, uh, you know, the ball was in his hands at the, at the critical moments. Yeah, Darian, Darian's a big time player for our team. Um, I mean, you guys seen the, the scoring outbreaks he had the last couple games, but it's really the defensive side, the pressure that he puts on the point guards, and uh, we love him. I mean, we, we need him, and we need him tonight, and we're just uh, glad to have him on our team. Yeah, just to add on that, you know, Darren is a special player. We've been been with him all year, and we, we've seen him do <clears throat> what, what he did these past two, past two games a uh, hundred times over, over the practices and even games. And so um, just to see him break out, it's no surprise to us, but it, it does make us happier to see him, just to see him uh, scoring and, and really leading us because, man, this man, he puts in the work, you know. He came from Seattle, uh, overlooked, and... Yeah, man, for him just to step up and do what he did for us is, is special, and we all love him for that. And even if he didn't do it, we still love him. He knows that. Time for one more <laughs> on the aisle. Uh, Brian, kind of a two-part question back here. Uh, given the, the, uh, the way the game ended, and uh, did you expect that the officials would swallow their whistle at the end? And second part, what do you think about uh, Coach McDermott uh, biting his tongue and not complaining about the officiating. It's, it's hard. That's what we all do is have some grace in losing, even though we may not agree with the call. The, the, you can't do anything about it. So he's, got, he's a class act. And so I'm sure deep down he felt they should have had an opportunity. It didn't happen. And uh, you have to remember, I was at Michigan in 1989 where people questioned whether Ramil Robinson was fouled, and he made two free throws, and we won a national title. So this is not the first time fouls have been called at the end of uh, NCAA tournament games. Very good. Coach, guys, congratulations, and good luck in Houston. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate everything. Thank you.